controversial coloring book on September 11th is causing a stir just a few weeks before the 10th anniversary of the attacks on America. Action News reporter Julie Bonovich is here to tell us why some people are so very upset. Julie? Uh, that's right, Diana. Now, the company calls this a graphic coloring novel. It depicts the events of 9-11 and the war on terror. And we're going to show you some of those pictures right now. It's called the We Shall Never Forget 9-11, the Kids' Book of Freedom. It has sparked controversy over the language that there's a picture of the Twin Towers smoking and that, yes, kids can even color in the last moments of Osama bin Laden's life with a soldier pointing a gun at him. Now, coloringbook.com says they designed the book to be factual and respectful for children over five years old, even though it does have a PG rating to it. Now, the release coincides with the 10th anniversary of 9-11, and we showed the coloring book to Dawood Walid, the executive director for the Council on American Islamic Relations, and he calls the book disgusting, saying it portrays all Muslims as radicals, when indeed American Muslims had nothing to do with 9-11, and they were victims, as well as first responders on that day. This publisher is doing a disservice to innocent young minds by uh, showing this type of nonsense and every single reference to Muslims has to do with radical extremists and uh, depictions of people being terrorists. Now, the publisher released this statement to 7 Action News about the use of Osama bin Laden, saying that because they see the man, Osama bin Laden, gets shot in black and white, that provides closure for them. Now, the company also says that the book is selling well here in Michigan. Reporting live, Julie Bonovich. That's WTTG's Tucker Barnes with the very latest. Tucker, what are you experiencing there? Uh, hi guys, yeah, the uh, conditions here continue to uh, deteriorate in a big way. We've uh, had wind gusts to about 60 miles per hour here. I'm on the boardwalk, which of course is uh, one of the most popular uh, sort of hot spots here in Ocean City during the summer. And uh, just in the past uh, hour or so, the waves have really started to pick up and they've been making a charge at the seawall, which was built back in the uh, 1980s after Hurricane Gloria. And as uh, the waves are crashing up against the seawall, it's uh, developing this, this foam that is uh, riding over the top and uh, starting to stick to all the hotels and, and uh, buildings right along the, uh, the boardwalk here. Excuse me, it's, uh, it's in my face as well, as you can imagine. It uh, doesn't taste great. Um, I, I've been told by my station, uh, I, I don't know what it is, but um, it has a sort of a sandy consistency to it. You guys there? Yeah, Tucker, we've never seen anything like this. You just said it has a, a sandy consistency. What is it? It smells like ocean, I take it? Yeah, you got it. It, it. it smells like ocean. Uh, our chief meteorologist back at the station said that it's uh, some sort of organic matter, or I guess uh, uh, plankton or something, and, and uh, mixed in with sand and salt. Um, I, I can tell you uh, firsthand that it, it doesn't smell great. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, well, it doesn't sting a whole lot. It, it feels kind of soapy, but um, it doesn't smell great. I mean, foam usually kind of dissipates uh, on the spot. It, it, this is the first you've seen. This area in Ocean City isn't known for this, right? You know, sometimes we have these popular spots we like to go to for a storm. You haven't seen anything like this. This area is not known for this, right? Never seen anything like it, and uh, I, I was talking to a resident uh, that was around the corner, and uh, he told me that he's been here for 25 years and never seen anything like it either, so uh, it? I, I take it as highly unusual, and of course related to the uh, hurricane activity, uh, must really be uh, spinning up the ocean here. Uh, you you can't, probably can't see it because it's dark, but I've got uh, very large waves just off my shoulder here, uh, and it's a very angry sea. I mean, I've got waves breaking about six feet away, and, and the water keeps just pushing towards me here. You know, Tucker, that area so, is under... Uh, uh, at some point, I'm going to wait for the... Tucker, are I'm you sorry. Well, you know, Tucker, that area yeah. is under. Can you hear me? Um, yeah, I can hear you. Under mandatory evacuation order. If you're on the boardwalk, we can hardly even see the boardwalk. It's hard to see where you are actually, and that water is coming right over. You would think pretty soon you have to get out of there too, right? Yeah, yeah. We're in a we're my my crew's in a hotel uh, just a, a few yards away, and uh, we're on the fourth floor, so we're going to be just fine. And I will retreat as soon as if it gets any more dangerous than this, of course. But uh, right now we're okay. We're just getting some gusty winds, and again, the, the waves haven't successfully breached the wall. Just just the sea foam at this point. Tucker, we've never seen anything like it. Uh, it it's it's wild. We thank you for joining us, uh, Tucker Barnes from our uh, sister station. If you're going to take that power on, then you have to win the conversation. And that means challenging the climate uh, deniers, mm -hmm. 
it, it means asserting your beliefs. It means confronting candidates and elected officials with the depth of, of your conviction and mm -hmm. the strength of your passion. I, I remember, again, going back to my uh, early years in the South, when the Civil Rights Revolution was unfolding, there, there were two things that really made an impression on me. My generation watched Bull Connor turning the hose on the civil rights demonstrators, and we went, whoa, <laughs> how, how gross and evil is that? And my generation asked uh, older people, explain to me again why it's okay to discriminate against people because their skin color is different. And when they couldn't really answer that question with integrity, the change really started. Secondly, back to this phrase, win the conversation, there came a time when friends or people you work with or people you were in clubs with, you're much younger than me, so you didn't really go through this personally, but there came a time when racist uh, comments would come up in the course of the conversation, and in years past, they would just, you know, just natural. There came a time when people said, hey, man, <laughs> Why do you talk that way? I mean, that's that's wrong. You know, I, I don't go. I don't go for that. So I don't talk that way around me. I just don't believe that. That happened in millions of conversations, and slowly the conversation was won. And we still have racism. God knows, but it's so different now. It's so much better. And we have to win the conversation on climate. In some quarters it has become almost politically incorrect to use the word. I think it's difficult to talk about. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Global Government News. Today is Monday, August 29th, 2011. I'm Darko. This is part three. Um, it might be the final bulletin, but it depends on how shitty my computer is. I may have to just bust into a fourth video, a special video. So it says here, Irene's impact on oil, natural gas, pipelines, and transport. So... Uh, a lot of that is knocked out due to the, uh, the man-made hurricane. Energy operations resume after uh, Irene, 5 million lose power. Then Irene takes out some East Coast cell phone services. And New York City to shut down public transport for Hurricane Irene. Um, and that's basically uh, prior to uh, telling people that they have to be evacuated. So it says here, Virginia governor declares state of emergency for quake. Uh, and I think New Jersey did too. Federal government to help reimburse states for Irene damage. So they uh, basically, like I uh, said before, it's going to be FEMA coming in there um, after uh, a man-made storm. And they're going to pay off uh, these people, um, these poor uh, people that are desperate, and they're going to buy their trust. And so when the FEMA camps come, after the bankers have taken everything you have, um, marching off to the FEMA camps, and you're, th you're going to think that you're your buddy. So you just go ahead and get your chip or your vaccine and get your new ID card, and welcome to the New World Order, slave. Hurricane Irene 2011, New York City's catastrophe that wasn't, so a lot of hype. Then it says here was the media's coverage of Hurricane Irene overhyped, and I will say yes, because I was really getting sick of hearing it and all the sensationalizing. And he looked down into it, and it wasn't even that big of a damn hurricane. Uh, Lowe's Home Depot may benefit as Hurricane Irene victims clean up damages. So a lot of people are going to benefit from this. Um, says here, Hurricane Irene, as thousands deploy, National Guard supports joint team civilian authorities. And uh, talking about 400,000 Guard members are available, and, uh, and they're from 3,000 communities nationwide. And they're coming from Alaska, Illinois, Louisiana, and New Mexico, along with Pennsylvania. And there's uh, Alaska's Air National Guard, so a lot of buildup over here. Experts praise the decisions to evacuate from Irene. So, so it was kind of like the uh, that bridge that got shut down in L.A. It was uh, what was it, uh, Carmageddon or something like that. And look at New Jersey Governor Christie says, "Get the hell off the beach." And you kept hearing those threats from all these governors and mayors and that politicians saying, "Get the hell off the beach. Get the hell off the coast. Get the hell out of here." Just kind of like with that uh, psyop in California with that bridge and 
um, Poncho, whatever his name is, getting out there telling to stay away. So I was here, and I got, like I said before, this is just to tell the slaves' condition and what to do. When the government says to jump, you say how high. Vermont flooding is worse in a century due to tropical storm Irene. And uh, moving on, Irene's impact was flooding rain and lingering rain, uh, rain. Sorry, Drought leaves millions facing water shortage, and that's in China. Then we have dispersants using BP Gulf oil spill linked to cancer. Fresh oil slicks forming over deep water horizon site. Climate change links to social mental health, says an Australian study. And that's right, when you don't see the sun for a whole week because uh, those bastards are up there spraying you like a pest, um, yeah, you will get a little down, a little depressed. And uh, it says here, getting ready for a wave of coal plant shutdowns, and that's due to Al Gore's fake, phony, uh, fraudulent uh, global warming theory. It says here, uh, Cal and uh, you know, the climate change is man made. You know what it is? Like I said, it's weather modification. That's what it is. It's cloud seeding, it's making, it's making lightning, it's making um, thunderstorms, it's making snow, it's making earthquakes and hurricanes and all that. That's, that's climate change. Man is man has now become God, and they can manipulate the weather. Yes, it is true. It does happen. California would be the first state to ban foam containers, and then uh, basically Beatlemania Fed gives four states a bunch of money to protect the insect habitat. And it's crazy because I talked to a person who was actually spraying for these beetles, and he ended up breaking out with hives all over him. Uh, the next day, Chicago power outages. How smart meters can help. So again, more uh, fake lightning, or real lightning, but more man-made uh, uh, thunderstorms and lightning uh, going on in Chicago. And uh, now they're talking about having smart meters. And smart meters, they know when you've been sleeping. So they track your usage and uh, a lot more. And now they're going to be installed due to, like I said, man-made storms. Problem, reaction, solution. Polar bear kills young British adventurer in Norway. This is uh, August 5th. Then uh, August 26th, Alaska appeals decision on polar bear protection, uh, appealing a federal ruling that upholds a 2008 decision to give polar bears federal protection under the Endangered Species Act. Grizzly bears and wolves may be taken off the protection list and it's going to be challenged by environmentalists this is december 2010 then michigan man killed by grizzly in yellowstone and this is just the other day and it says here a man faces two years in prison for shooting grizzly while defending his family and state department aggressively pushed genetically modified crops to help agribusinesses and then we move on here as soon as my computer goes biosafety boss sacked an import row for allowing the importation of genetically modified food and uh, it's like the Arby's commercial, uh, good mood food. Just think about it. It's GMF, genetically modified food. Do you see that? Tamiflu, resistant flu outbreak reported in Australia's Newcastle. And don't forget bird flu, the UN's warning about it. Patients receive HIV-infected organs. Clinical uh, Clinic warns Wisconsin patients blood exposure is possible. And talk about HIV. Then we have... Global governments must get tough on obesity. And then we have the UN uh, saying that half of Americans, wait, on a computer, half of Americans uh, will be obese by 2030. Parents need new skills to maintain discipline. So California, California man accused of throwing son off a cruise boat. That's good discipline. Then we have police parents punished a dead boy by denying water. Then Beagley will serve no jail. And that's for uh, what? Um, for her adopted son, uh, giving her hot sauce and a cold shower. And then we have 50,000 tantrum brother and sister sue uh, their mother after she bought the wrong birthday card and refused them toys. So just everything is really jacked up. You know, it really is. So parents are afraid to discipline. And then you have spoiled, rotten generation brats. TV's crop of new false shows is touting girl power. Of course, it's a pharaonic thing. Um, of making Cleopatra's everywhere around the world, right? And horrors of ISIS, as I said before, where they're uh, basically fatherless children. Boy of four is threatened with $5,000 fine for playing too loudly in his garden. We have boy age 11 treated for chlamydia as thousand under 16-year-olds seek help for sexual diseases. And it uh, says here, and I'm surprised all that education didn't help, all that sex said. Knife attack at Chinese daycare center. Staff members, uh, nurse, slash children with a knife at a daycare center for migrant workers in eastern China, wounding eight children. This is a growing ch uh, trend in China. Students slashed a ninth knife 
attack in China in two months. Then man with knife attacks kindergartners in China. Then China's uh, law change would allow secret detentions. And then they're already doing it. Uh, it says here, a poll 87% of people in U.S. disapprove of Congress. NYPD confirms CIA officer works at department and GPS tracking device gives Australians with dementia greater independence. And lastly, DNA spray marks out these. This is GGN and I'm Darko. Thank you.